Hey, come here, check this out. I think there's somebody in there. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, there's people watching. Hey everyone, Rick's here and it's time to make another loaf of sourdough bread. We're going to make one that you can fit into your schedule. If you know that you're going to want bread tomorrow, you're going to need to start this today. This is day number one. Normally what I would do is I would plan to start this in the afternoon of day number one. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, something like that. I wouldn't go past 3 o'clock unless you just like to stay up really late at night. All right, well, let's get right into it. Now, in this particular recipe, it's going to be 400 grams of whole wheat. 400 grams of whole wheat. It's going to have 200 grams of AP flour. That's just going to help it have a little bit more fluff, soft, and lift. And I'm going to put 520 mils or 520 grams is the same thing on your scale of water and we're going to mix that up and then we're going to let it out at least so let's get right into that portion all right so i'm going to put my bowl on the scale and i'm going to zero it out now for this bread, I'm going to use my sifted, sprouted whole wheat flour. You can just use regular whole wheat flour, but I highly recommend that you sift it and get most of the bran out of that. It's going to allow for a lighter loaf. But this is the sprouted. It's a little sweeter. And uh, if you haven't uh, seen my video on how to make your own sprouted wheat flour, uh, I'll have the uh, card right there so that you can um, check it out. All right, so we're going to go 400 grams of the whole wheat, sifted, make sure it's sifted, it's going to make a difference with your water if you don't sift it four hundred of my sprouted whole wheat flour just adds an extra layer of health using the sprouted but the fermenting of this overnight is going to give this thing lots of nutrients it's going to really break down that phytic acid which is great. Okay, 200 grams of the AP flour. Let's get that in there. Two hundred grams of AP. All right. Five hundred and twenty grams of water. That's why we're not going to need this. We're going to do stretching folds because it's a really wet and you want a lot of water, like a high 85, 86, whatever percent hydration, anytime you're using a lot of whole wheat. I'm going to get my Danish spatula here. We're going to mix this in really well. All right, there we go. That's it. That's all that's to it. And now we're just going to cover it. Okay, now that we have the flour and the, and the water mixed together, we're going to let it auto-lease. I'm going to let mine auto-lease for at least five hours before I start adding in the additional ingredients, uh, which you'll see that shortly. Um, meanwhile, what we want to do is we want to get our sourdough starter ready so that by the time four or five hours comes around, that starter will be in its peak ready to uh, be added to this mixture. 
Now here is my sourdough starter and it's uh, as you can see there it's real nice and bubbly. Now this is a rye starter. I switched over to rye flour a couple of days ago. Zero it out. Okay this recipe it's going to call for 65 grams of starter. 65 grams of starter. So what I want to do is I'm just going to take a tablespoon of my starter and put it in there. Okay, just a tablespoon is all I need. Okay, so if I'm going for 65 grams of starter, that means I'm going to need at least, oh, let's say 33 grams of flour and 33 grams of water. That's going to come out to 66 grams uh, when it's all said and done. But of course, when you're trying to scrape it out of the thing there, you're going to leave some behind. So this will make sure that we have enough. So let me just go for, let's say 33 grams of flour. Okay, say 66 grams total. Okay, close enough. Mix it well. Nothing could be easier. Get all that dried flour picked up there. So I've just fed that one tablespoon of starter with 33 grams of flour and 33 grams of water. And we're gonna let that sit also for four to five hours so that it will be ready at the same time that we're ready to put it in the mixture. We will be back in about five hours. Now it's been five hours. I guess see you got a little, a few little bubbles and stuff in here, but uh, this has just been uh, auto leasing for the last few hours. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the 65 grams of the starter that we've had also sitting out for four or five hours. So let me get that all in there. There we go. I'm just going to just going to leave a little bit inside the jar here so I can refeed it. Okay. I'm just scraping a little bit off here, but it just gets to a point it's not worth it anymore. And I'm just going to spread my starter all across the top here just to get a good, good mix starting here. All right. All right, now I'm just going to go around the bowl, just kind of scraping it off there, and I'm going to start mixing it in. Okay, just get it all nice and mixed in. Very simple. Make sure that that starter is well incorporated. Start seeing a color change because this the starter was darker. It was the rye. Now it's meeting its cousins, the sprouted wheat and AP flour. Stretch and fold, but for 
we're mixing. Okay, that's good for right now. Cover it, and we'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes since I did the first uh, stretch and fold, folding in the starter. Now, what I'm gonna do is another stretch and fold. Okay, go ahead and cover her up and we'll be back in 30 more minutes. All right, now it's time to do the next stretch and fold. But before I do that, I'm gonna start putting in some seasoning. Now I was at Sam's Club today, and no, they're not a sponsor, of course. And uh, I found this Everything Bagel Seasoning. Uh, there's a lot of other seasonings that you can get. You can get rosemary, garlic, and all that. And I'm gonna do a video on using those different seasonings in the future. But we're gonna do this with the Everything Bagel Seasoning this time. And it is also a good time to add the salt. I don't like to add the salt always at the very beginning, although that's not really a problem. We're gonna use 10 grams of salt for this, so let me go ahead and get that. I'm gonna sprinkle that in. Now usually I'd go a little bit more than 10 grams because I, I like a little more salt than less. But because I'm adding all these seasonings in there, um, I can actually get away with less salt. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sprinkle in this uh, seasoning mix. Now if you don't have this, you may have the individual components uh, in your home. Uh, it's poppy seeds, sesame seeds, um, you have uh, garlic um, powder, or you have onion flakes, that kind of thing. And uh, that makes, you know, the everything seasoning. So I'm gonna just kind of be real generous sprinkling across the top. All right, stop right there. And using my little oiled thing here so it doesn't stick so much. A little scraper. I'm going to go around the bowl. And I'm going to stretch and fold. Stretch and fold. I also call it stretch and pull, but I'm not pulling this time. I get this thing. Stretch and fold. Stretch and fold. And because I want to incorporate the uh, seasoning really well inside the dough, I'm actually going to be going around a few times. Matter of fact, I'm going to just go ahead and get my, my hands in here. Give it a nice little pull there. You don't want to rip it, and at this stage, hopefully it's not, it doesn't feel like it's going to rip. It should be developing some really good bonds there, gluten bonds. Another thing you can do is you can get underneath it like so and plop it down like that. Turn it around 180 degrees, get up through the center, fold it under like that. That's another technique if you want to kind of get a little more air and substance into your dough. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cover this up and come back in another 30 minutes. So another 30 minutes or so has gone by. And I'm gonna come in here and just do another stretch and fold. And pretty much I'm just gonna do this every 30 minutes until I'm ready to retire for the night. 
So it'd probably get about four or five stretching folds. And then what I'll do is I'll cover it up and then pick up in the morning to shape and to bake. So we'll finish this set of stretching folds. Make sure that seasoning that I put in here gets well mixed in there as well. It smells really good, I'll tell you that. Wunderbar. All right, plenty of stretchies and foldies. Okay, now I'll be continuing because it's still pretty early in my evening. I started early. So I'll be continuing my stretch and folds every, I'll probably do one in an hour and every hour as well since I still have a lot of time and I'll end up getting uh, five or six stretch and pulls in. And then let's just say that it's time to go to bed right now. Leave it out room temperature, uh, you know, 12 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. Uh, don't go anywhere more than that because, you know, it just, it'll get way too tardy in my opinion. But anyway, so let's just say you've, you've done your fourth stretch and fold or your fifth stretch and fold. You're done for the night. Leave it on the counter or somewhere and uh, just let it go. Ignore it. Don't do anything else. Well, good morning. Yes, yeah, the next day, and it's currently 8.42 a.m. I overslept this morning. Anyway, uh, just to give you kind of a run-up of uh, what's going on so far, I ended up doing five stretch and folds yesterday. Every 30 minutes, I did a stretch and fold. <clears throat> but by the time I was done with the fifth one, it was still too early for me to go to bed. And uh, I didn't want to leave this out for you know, 15, 16 hours and so what I decided to do is when I went to bed, I put this in the refrigerator, which just slows the process down. So if, it, if it's gonna be more than 12 hours, let's say, give or take, uh, that you're gonna be able to get to this part in the morning the next day, put it in the refrigerator, slow it down. Uh, that way it just doesn't overproof. And at the same time too, I mean, it, it'll keep fermenting and fermenting and fermenting. Uh, but you know, you just don't want it to get too overblown. Uh, I've had it out now for about 30 minutes and uh, now we're just going to go ahead and take this wonderful fluffy dough here as you can see really nice stuff here. I got on a clean counter I didn't put any flour down you can put a little bit down got some bubbles and everything happening here which is a really good sign but we're gonna just do another bench stretch and fold here. And uh, you'll probably want one of these little babies here with you. And I'm just, just doing some stretchy and foldies like so. And I'm not, you know, abusing the dough or anything like that. I like to keep as much of the goodness inside. I don't want to squeeze out too many of the bubbles. Though personally myself, I'm I'm not one of those who like the big bulb, the big holes because I use my bread as sandwich bread and I don't want all the condiments coming out. But in this case here, this is going to be one of those things where I'm going to Ooh, it's getting nice and stiff. I like that. It's going to be one of those where you just slather with butter or, or actually cream cheese would be awesome because uh, I use that seasoning just like my everything bagels, you know. All right, so after you do that, you know, just I'm just going to let this puppy bench rest here. And uh, we'll get into forming and putting this hole. 
in about 30 minutes. So just let it sit there on the bench, let it rest, relax. It just got smacked around early in the morning before it even had a chance to wake up. So anyway, we'll be back in 30 minutes. All right, so we've had a nice little 25 minute bench rest here. That would be fine. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this over to the side here a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit of flour, not much, just a little bit. Now I don't like to overflower my bread, but I want a little bit of non-stickiness happening here as I'm going to now start forming the bread into my loaf shape and I'm going to put it into my basket. Okay, so in this case here, got a little flour on it, get a little flour on my hands. Okay, I'm just gonna gently move it out like so. Okay, I'm just gonna bring the old corners in like so. Okay. Right. It's so nice and sticky that it's going to just do everything that I want it to do. So I really like that. Okay. I like to bring everything into the middle. Just make this nice big ball here. Okay. And I'm kind of just sliding it down around my around my counter here just to give it a nice little taunt top there, not too much. And I definitely don't want it to start breaking the skin on top either. It ain't gone a little too far, but just just give it a little bit of shape, you know. About the best you can do because it's a high uh, a very high hydrated bread or dough I should say um, you're going to have a uh, you're going to have a little bit of where it's just going to go back down you know and say look dude I don't really want to be this shape I want to want to flatten out a little bit but that's not a problem this just kind of helps it a little bit you know just give it a little bit of tautness now most times when you put this in your banneton to prepare it for your your loaf shaping and everything, you put it face down because you're going to plop it back when it's all said and done. Now I don't do that because I'm going to be uh, putting this in parchment paper that's in my banneton and I'm going to bake it in my uh, Dutch oven. So I'm gonna keep the, the little bubbles coming out here, you know, just pinch those little things. What I'm doing is giving it a nice little ball shape. I'm tucking underneath it, and because it's so sticky, it's going to, it's going to grab underneath. See, it's gonna grab underneath. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. And uh, just to give it a nice little shape, get a nice little tautness going there. Not too much. You know, to each their own. But I find that it makes it kind of go up really nice too. And of course we're gonna take the lawn to it and give it a little slice. But now to make sure I can lift this up with without too much problem. Right there. Little bubbles, bubbles, bubbles everywhere. Bubbles, I'm just gonna pinch those little bubbles. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Beautiful and jiggly, look at that. It's very hydrated. And I got bubbles starting all over the place here because this baby wants to grow. It wants to grow. Now I'm gonna leave this here for about an hour, hour and a half. At this current rate, it looks like that's gonna be plenty. Sometimes you might have to wait a couple hours. Sourdough has its own schedule for uh, rising 
It's slower than yeasted breads. Get some of this moisture off my thing here because it was in the fridge. There we go. And, you know, we'll go ahead and just give it a little bit of that. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sprinkle of water here, won't hurt it. And then I'm going to sprinkle on my sprinkle on my nice little this is going to be great okay not the best way to do it sorry but but you are seeing things as they happen in real time here folks and how I just kind of do things on the fly, but it just sounds like a great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right, so now I'm going to cover it. Keep it out here room temperature. It's about 70 degrees in this room, so it's not very warm. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there in about, oh, an hour and a half. It'll be ready to go. But in about 30 minutes, I'm gonna put that oven on at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like 260 or something Celsius. I don't remember. Anyway, um, and uh, I'm gonna let that preheat for about an hour. Okay, with the lid on, the Dutch oven, Dutch oven in the oven, 500 degrees with the lid on, and uh, about an hour and a half will have gone by, we'll put this dough into the Dutch oven, and we'll bake it away for, well, you'll see. All right, well, it's been a couple of hours, and the dough has risen quite well sourdough that doesn't use the store-bought yeast like the instant yeast and so forth tends to proof a lot slower and you don't really look for uh, a big rise but this is quite a substantial rise and you can see that it's ready to go before i put it in my hot dutch oven which has been preheating at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll just put down over here what that is in Celsius, uh, 230 or something, I don't know. Um, but it's been in there for an hour. So about uh, 30, 40 minutes in on the proofing, I turned the oven on with an empty Dutch oven and the cover on the top so it's heating up i'm gonna bring that out here in a second but before i do that i want to get this thing scored give it a nice half inch slice of just like that now I get it caught in the end of this blade here and it kind of yanks. I hate doing that. I'm such a silly guy. I am not a professional baker by any chance. I'm a home hobbyist. And if some of you are familiar with my Ricks Can Do It YouTube channel, I'm a pencil artist, an amateur of everything. But I like to do everything. And I like to make bread. All right. Now, it's time to pull out the mix match gloves. I got one of each kind here. Woohoo! Here we go. 500 degrees. Whoa, in my face. That's really hot. Ow, 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 ow. I'm gonna close the oven door. And, woo! Yeah, baby. Now, what you wanna do, is you want to take your 
your bread, your dough, it's not bread yet, but your dough, with the parchment paper, just kind of lift that yuppie out of there and carefully lower it down into the pan and put that lid on and get that oven spring to start right away. Oh, I gotta open the oven. see. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> yes, into the oven. And timer. 20 minutes. Start. All right. Woo. Man. Okay. So, it's going to be in my oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit with the lid on for 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, I'm going to take the lid off. I'm gonna move the temperature down to 450 Fahrenheit for another 20 minutes. Get it all nice and brown. You know, you can kind of judge how dark you want the bread to be. I kind of like that darker, you know, mid-dark, mid-dark crust, you know. Right, okay. So anyway, let's come back in 20 minutes. Yeah, I hate waiting. What am I gonna do for 20 minutes? Hey, watch YouTube. All right, so gonna do that right. Okay, 20 minutes is up. I'm gonna set this for another 20 minutes. Won't start it just yet. All right, the temperature I'm gonna bring down to 450. Okay, now put on the gloves or at least the glove. I'm going to do this one-handed here. Time to remove the lid. Look at that baby. Woo, she's looking fine. All right, put that back in. And we're going to start that timer for another 20 minutes for a total cooking time of 40 minutes in my particular oven at 400 and 50 degrees fairy height. All right, see you then. Well, seriously, somebody has got to invent smell-o-vision. This, this aroma coming out of the oven is absolutely off the rack. Woo, it smells delicious. Got about four, three, two, one. That's the cue. Time to put on my mix match hand muffins. Silence. All right. Let's check it out. Oh boy, heat in the face. Ah. Oh. Mmm. Ah, 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 ah. Hot, hot, hot. Looky, looky. Wow. Ain't that sweet there. Wow. That looks really, really nice. Hmm. Hmm. Good-looking mamacita. Get this camera here. All right. 
Look at that. Wow. Ain't that nice looking. That's a nice looking bread. Right there. There's a panorama view. Huh? Look at that. Look at that. There. You know, and I could have cut a little deeper too. Gotten away with that. But look at that. One side a little darker than the other. Right at the old split line. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. So now we're going to let this thing rest for an hour or two and then I will cut into it. You certainly don't want to uh, cut into it while it is hot. It'll turn all gummy and everything and that's never any fun. So be back in a sec to you and two hours for me, I gotta go do some shopping. I just got home from shopping. I've been gone for at least two hours and it's all down to room temperature and I am so anxious to give this bread a try. Oh, it smells heavenly. All right, so I'm gonna cut into this yuppie. I can see it's really soft now as it's been sitting out. tight crumb so it's going to be great for toasting this thing and uh, uh, making sandwiches out of it awesome 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 all right and because I put that everything seasoning on it everything bagel I guess it's called from Tony's I might as well cream cheese this puppy I'm going to cream cheese half of it so I can taste the bread by itself See how this puppy is, you know? Yeah. I like a bread. So I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the part that doesn't have anything on there real real quick here. Mmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Now cream cheese part. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I always do this. But this is good. Good. Smell a vision. Smell a vision. This camera here. This camera here. Sorry, guys. Mm. 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 the video folks uh, you know the nice thing about this is I can't I won't feel guilty about eating this because this is this is healthy I used sprouted my sprouted whole wheat with the AP flour fermented it for like mega hours Wow I don't know how to describe it to you, but wow, you know, mm. oh, and this is going to make 
Sorry, I'm going to talk with my mouth full here, but this is going to make great sandwiches. If I don't eat it all with this cream cheese. Mmm. 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 My wife will kill me if I eat this whole thing. Okay. Well, that does it, everybody. Um, wow. That's really good. Really easy to make. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video on whatever the next bread recipe is, which I can't think of what that's going to be. But it's going to be something good. It always is. All right, like please, subscribe, see you later. Bye. That's nice, let it nice. Yeah, that's nice, nice, let it. Ooh, smooth. Mmm. Mmm.